Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this is a Nature at Your Door on the road episode. I'm here at Myrtle Beach Travel Park in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm about five hours away from my home in the Appalachian Mountains, and I enjoy coming here, especially in the off-season. I'm camping in my homemade hashtag van build camper van that I converted from a 2019 Chevy cargo van into this air-conditioned camper with a full-size bed, natural sheep wool insulation, white cedar tongue and groove paneling, and many more comfort features. This is a unique section of beach that seems to be isolated from the hustle and bustle that most people know of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's bound by a river inlet on each end that attracts various shorebirds and wading birds like great white egrets. A walk along the fishing pier here is a great way to see what creatures lurk below the ocean surface and there's a couple mile section of totally undeveloped beach with no houses or high rises. Today's episode is about the long-nosed spider crab and an interesting symbiotic relationship it has with the cannonball jellyfish. Like I did as a child many years ago, I still enjoy beachcombing and discovering what the sea might throw up for me today for me to discover and find. There are several crab species that you're likely to find either living or dead in the swash zone of the beachfront, including the familiar blue crab, hermit crabs, fiddler crabs, and even higher on the beach, ghost crabs. Today, I was lucky enough to find several long-nosed spider crabs. I found this one alive and well just above the wave line in the shade of a cannonball jellyfish that had also washed up on the beach. At first, I didn't make a connection between the two of them, but with a little more research, I'll explain what I found out about a bit later. This crab species, which I believe to be the long-nosed spider crab, Limonia dubia, is characterized by an almost circular body and a pointy nose. The upper side of the body is covered with short setae, which act like Velcro. And this crab will pick up seaweed and other organisms to disguise and camouflage itself. Some of these seaweed and invertebrates it puts on the shell are either unpalatable or certainly unpleasant to potential predators. They have five pairs of legs like other crabs, and the front pair has some small pinchers on them, but they're nowhere near as powerful and strong as those of the blue crab. Long-nosed spider crabs are found on beachfronts from Cape Cod all the way to Texas. While they're often seen unceremoniously caught by waves and trapped in the surf zone, their preferred habitat is to live in the shallow, sandy bottoms of the ocean, while their juveniles like to develop in seagrass stands. Like many other crab species, they're scavengers and detritivores, feeding on just about anything that they can pick up with their pinchers and eat, from small live organisms to decaying plant or animal matter. The fascinating story on this particular crab species is its association or symbiotic relationship with a cannonball jellyfish. This jellyfish is called a cannonball jelly because of its shape and size is approximately that of a cannonball. They may occur up to 10 inches in diameter and sometimes can be seen floating in the oceans by the thousands. They occur across the eastern seaboard. They're extremely abundant in the fall and summer months and can make up to 16% of the shallow inshore biomass at certain times of the year. Here I'm finding them inadvertently washed up on the beach. Turns out that perhaps my finding this long-nosed spider crab next to this cannonball jellyfish was no coincidence at all. It's thought that the free-living larvae of spider crabs will settle into the tentacles of a cannonball jelly and develop into a crab inside the protection of the jellyfish. Here the crab will become quite large. Whether the jellyfish benefits from this relationship in any way is not clear, and it's also possible that the crab itself may be feeding on the tentacles of the jellyfish. In this case, it would make that symbiotic relationship a parasitic one rather than a mutually beneficial mutualistic relationship or a commensal relationship where only one of the organisms in the pair benefits. 
This particular crab did not seem to know what to do or where to go since this cannonball jelly got washed up on the beach. So I gave him a helping hand and released him in some shallow water as the tide came in. I hope you enjoyed this on the road episode of Nature at Your Door here at North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I hope you learned a little bit more about some of the fascinating things that you may see and discover as you walk down the beach. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I always enjoy hearing from my viewers. Remember, I cover many different nature topics, and you may want to check out my playlists where I have them cataloged and organized. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.